Hello everyone, this is the Extended Spy Report for Monday, July the 22nd, 2013. We'll start with Spy. Notice that we are up over this particular level and now we have this extended level as the next potential target. So what are we looking at today? Well this morning we've got, we're relatively flat, not gapping up much at all. Um, the charts uh, are up incremental pennies and so there's no hand being shown here other than the fact that we were at we did make a brand new high in the ES very early this morning so the gaps are very very small as they have pulled back so what's the trade today please remember also that you can look down into the blog post and get this information step by step about where to buy, where to sell. Remember, your stops should be two steps away from the prior target. So for instance, if I tell you that the long begins above 169.29 and you run into the first target, which would be um, 169.50, uh, based on uh, another formation that we have, and then 169.73. When you get to 169.73, that's when you can move the stop to break even. Always leave two target points in between your stop, actually one target point, so you don't run the, the heavy risk of being stopped out. It's also a good idea to take profit at these target ranges, particularly if the very fast time frames, for instance, the 5 or the 15, are showing SMIs that are weakening or divergent. That is probably the best thing to do. So upside targets that we are looking at in SPY are going to be all the way into 169.93, which puts us about, you know, the midline here, and then 170.21 and 170.45. Mm, let's see what the next one is. I have 170.92. But I think I'm going to shift that down to 170.72. And then we have the 170.104 as that next target. The formation shows 171.11. So we can start looking at it very closely here. Here's the IWM. It's got the same sort of thing running through the banded parts, the grayed part of the extended pattern. The breach above the prior high uh, should give us a little bit of upside momentum. We are still closing both the both uh, the spy and the IWM. Whoops! You know what I forgot to do. I'm so sorry. What happens when we break down here? It'll be the loss of the pivot or the loss of this level in here, 168.85 ish, or the loss of the pivot. Um, uh, 16858, giving it a little bit of room here. Um, that will open up the short, and it'll send us down into this area more than likely, 16810. Although there is a chance that 16830 gets in our way. Right after that, just stair step down. You should have your person's pivots uh, put up there. And the person's pivots should matter greatly as we are trading. Notice I try to get this up to you well before the morning. So these pivot points do not get generated until after the open. So we want to be really careful about making sure that uh, they are in your list of things to look at. When in doubt, if my levels that I have projected as being nearly the pivots aren't quite right, 
like they're a few pennies off or 10 cents off even sometimes, make sure that you use the pivots instead. Stepping down into the spaces and paying attention to where these moving averages sit, that is the most key event for us to look at. After the loss of that pivot, we have this potential gap fill event that is still open that will terminate near this line at 167.60. All right, now back to the IWM, the breakout area. Um, it's going to be above 104.40 or at the bounce off the 104.15 area, that's just right around here, just above the pivot. It's very, very tight in there, as you can see. Still drifting downward, the slow SMI, but the fast SMI is now making a series of higher lows once more. Still making lower highs here, so we've got a little bit of conflict underneath, but all in all, things look very good. 104.67, one of the first targets. Then 104.96, and then 105.34, and then 105.76 to 78. All right. If we lose the level, um, we are going to have this likely region. It's the same unfilled gap event that we can see in SPY. The first target range would be the 103.29 area. Um, I'm going to write, I had to shift that one a little bit. Okay, 103.29 puts us at the base of the gap. And then the 103.80-ish area also gives us a little bit of an interim target in between, right? That 103.80 area. So we want to we wanna watch out for that uh, providing a little bit of noise. I'm very, very concerned about this noisy price action here. And this is dampening just a little bit, getting tighter over the last day or so. So we'll be watching for that. Downside action, again, should be into the 103.46-ish area. But if it loses that, that 103.46, we know we have more downside action on the way, right? And it'll go into that 103 area, 103.01, I would say. Maybe that resistance level ought to get us. But, you know, in the end, I, I do think that it's really more concerned about that gap, right? Which is 103.08. Okay. That's it for the IWM. Let's take a look at the Qs. Qs behaved very poorly. Look at this. Absolutely savage move down. Breaking down. See this little channel event right here? Totally breaking down the channel event. And that channel event should be the top line expression. If this chart is rotating further to the south, it should not breach above 75.23. That is just not something that is going to happen. Um, so you want to make sure that you look at that target carefully. If you're anticipating more downside and you've got a swing event, you need to really be careful watching that, making sure that it fails that region if it comes up to test it. If it begins to hover and hold the pivot, it's right back into the center zone of all this noise, and it's a space that... Um, you know, you want to uh, uh, look at in terms of um, the reversal and more upside momentum. All right, but before that, uh, the break to the upside starts at around this uh, 4, 74, 66 area. You could get a little aggressive and do it at 74.61, but 74.66 looks like the better one for the breach. Or if you take it aggressively, you can take it off 74.39, right into 74.77, 
and 74.99. This is the region right here again from the 74.99 area up to here. We're going to watch this midline also, which is 75.10. We really want to uh, see if that ends up rearing its head. You want to be really careful making some choices here to trade. Today charts are a little bit sloppy, very tight, and so we just want to stair step through these things extremely carefully. You know, if you don't have to trade, it is better not to because these formations are pretty ugly. I just got to tell you, uh, really pretty ugly. Okay, that's it. Have a good day trading. Good luck.